This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. And today's review is brought to you by the letter L for Cthulhu. Actually, that's obviously not the case because Cthulhu starts with a C. It's actually brought to you by the letter L for Lovecraft. The reason being, the movie I'm looking at today is Xavier Gans' Cold Skin. And I've read a few reviews of this movie, and it gets described as Lovecraftian a lot. And the reason being, anything that involves monsters, particularly from the sea, is often called Lovecraftian. Though, let's be clear, Cold Skin is not Lovecraftian. It does involve monsters, well, creatures, I should say, from the sea. But the thing is, to describe something as Lovecraftian, it's more than that. It's an air of mystery, of desolation, of hopelessness. That's an important one. Hopelessness about the situation. I guess the best way to describe something that's Lovecraftian is people in a situation where they have very little optimism of escaping said situation. A hopelessness pervades a lot of Lovecraft's work. And I'm not necessarily talking about a lot of the people who use Lovecraft's characters, though I would argue it's there as well, to greater or lesser degrees depending upon the writer. So that feeling of despair, of loss, of hope is, for me, central to anything called Lovecraftian. If you take that away, it is not Lovecraftian. John Carpenter's The Thing is Lovecraftian. It has nothing to do with water at all, or creatures from water, yet it's extremely Lovecraftian. Why is that? Because its mood is one of mistrust and despair and fear. Those are elements of Lovecraftian fiction. So, as I said, Cold Skin is not Lovecraftian. It's a damn good movie, though, but it's not Lovecraftian. In fact, if I were to compare Cold Skin to anything, it ironically would be something like Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. And you're going, what? That's a war movie. And you would be right. Apocalypse Now is indeed a war movie. But what it also is, is a movie about the nature of man and the darkness that exists within him and how that is manifest in the world around him. And Cold Skin, that's pretty much what it is. The movie revolves around this weather surveyor type person and I think weather observer he was called, something like that. And he works on this very isolated island. And when he's taken to the island, he's left I think for a period of 12 months. And on the island is a lighthouse, which early in the film we note has all kinds of barricades and types of things set up around it. We don't know why. No one is, as far as we're aware, no one is in it, but it's all set up as if it were being attacked. Move forward a little later, the new weather surveyor is attacked himself by these creatures. And so, eventually makes his way to the lighthouse, which is occupied by seemingly a, a madman. Oh, by the way, it's worth mentioning that this movie came out in 2007, well, I should say it was made in 2017. It was released late 2019. And the reason I mention that is, it's actually very similar in a lot of ways to David Edgar's The Lighthouse which came out in 2019. I'm not applying that either movie copied the other. I really doubt that. But at the same time, they're remarkably similar thematically. In any case, he eventually comes to meet the person who's manning the lighthouse, someone named Gruner, 
played by an unrecognizable Ray Stevenson. I mean that literally. I had no idea who this guy was. It only, only as the movie progressed did I recognize the actor, which for me is a sign of good acting. If the actor vanishes into the character, and for a while I'm wondering who is this person, that is great. And something people like Tom Cruise or Will Smith cannot do. In any case, he eventually discovers that Grunner has this thing with him. And it's this aquatic being. Brings back memories of the man from Atlantis with Patrick Duffy. In any case, this aquatic thing. And the movie, as the movie progresses, we learn that the lighthouse is attacked regularly by hordes of these creatures. We don't know why and we don't know how. And this goes to what I was saying about Apocalypse Now. Namely, Gruner is fighting these creatures just to fight them. He has, I should mention, this movie takes place during World War I. And Gruner, as well as the weather surveyor, they're trying to escape the conflict. They're, they've had enough of war. But that's the thing. Human nature is by its nature violent and mean and ugly at times. So they bring the war with them in a very real sense. And something about them, and you never quite know what it is, but something about them causes the aquatic beings to attack relentlessly every night. Well, most every night. There are lulls during a movie. But it's just the idea that we bring the violence with us. Because these creatures, as you'll see later in the movie, are not inherently violent. It's something about us that brings out the violence in them. And so, for that reason, this is not a Lovecraftian movie. It is a damn good one. If you haven't checked out Cold Skin, it's on Vudu. I assume it's on Amazon. I assume it's on iTunes as well. I haven't checked, but if it's on Vudu, it's more than likely on other services. It's not an exclusive that I know of. And it's really good. It's atmospheric. It's well-directed. It's gorgeous. It's, it, I wouldn't say it's lush because there's no real greenery to speak of, but it's very stark. And in its own way, it's beautiful. Check out Cold Skin. This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. Peace.